In the pursuit of alternative forms of propulsion, the gas turbine engine emerged as an intriguing possibility. While electric vehicles are gaining prominence today, back in the mid-20th century, car manufacturers were exploring the potential of jet engines. One notable example of this pioneering spirit was the Rover BRM, a gas turbine-powered car that not only raced at Le Mans but also came close to victory in its class. The journey of the Rover BRM began with the Rover Jet 1, a fully functional jet-powered car that was introduced to the public in 1950. This open two-seat tourer demonstrated the feasibility of gas turbine engines and convinced Rover to continue investing in this technology. By the early 1960s, Rover had developed its fourth gas turbine prototype, known as the D4. In 1962, the D4 made its way to the Le Mans, where it completed a demonstration lap before the race. The organizers were so impressed with the car that they decided to offer a special prize for any gas turbine powered race cars that could cover a minimum distance of 3,600 kilometers in the 24 hours. This presented Rover with an opportunity to showcase its engine leading to a partnership with Formula 1 team British Racing Motors, or BRM for short, to develop a competitive Le Mans racer. Based on a modified Formula 1 chassis and featuring an open cockpit aluminium body, the Rover BRM was assembled in a short span of time. It was powered by a 2S150 gas turbine engine mounted in the rear. This turbine engine idled at 28,000 RPM and could reach up to 55,000 RPM. Now in the race, this car got some special treatment. You see, unlike conventional cars, which had a limited fuel tank capacity, the Rover BRM was allowed to use a larger 218 liter or 58 gallon fuel tank filled with paraffin oil. Then in the 1963 Le Mans race, the Rover BRM participated as an unofficial experimental entry with the BRM's Formula 1 driver Graham Hill and Richie Ginter taking turns behind the wheel. The car achieved impressive speeds of close to 240 km per hour or 149 miles per hour on the Mulsanne Strait. It completed 310 laps and covered a total distance of 4,165 km, securing the organizer's prize. And if the car was officially classified, the Rover BRM would have claimed 8th place overall, which is pretty impressive. Delighted and optimistic due to their success, the team aimed to improve the car for the 1964 Le Mans race. The Rover BRM received a new closed cockpit body and revised 150 horsepower 2S150R turbine engine featuring ceramic heat exchangers to enhance fuel efficiency. And they were ready to impress the world once again. However, a crash involving the team's tow truck damaged the car, preventing its participation in the race. That truck driver probably got fired. Anyways, undeterred, the Rover BRM returned to Le Mans as an official entry in 1965, with Graham Hill and Jackie Stewart at the helm. The British turbine car showed promise, initially hovering around the top 10. However, the engine began to overheat during the race, forcing engineers to reduce the power levels. Despite this setback, the Rover BRM completed the race, securing 12th place overall and second in its category. This achievement was remarkable for a car powered by a jet engine that had been developed from scratch just three years earlier. Imagine being in the stands and hearing this thing fly past. Sounds exciting. Now following Le Mans, the Rover BRM embarked on a global tour, making appearances at renowned auto shows. It also underwent endurance tests on public roads, and in 1974 the car was retired and found a permanent home at the Heritage Motor Center in Gayton, Warwickshire. But the car didn't die in some museum. The fully restored Rover BRM returned to Le Mans in 2014, attracting significant attention from spectators. The experimental power plant was fired up once again, reminding viewers of the car's groundbreaking history. While gas turbine engines did not become a dominant power source in the automotive industry, the Rover BRM remains an iconic and pioneering vehicle. 
Its participation in Le Mans and its accomplishments on the track demonstrated the potential of alternative propulsion methods. Today, the Rover BRM serves as a reminder of the relentless pursuit of technological advancement in the automotive world, and this is something that hasn't stopped since. As the industry continues to evolve, embracing electric vehicles and other sustainable options, such as hydrogen, e-fuels, and even ammonia fuels. But at the end of it, let me know what you think of this car. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I found out about this one, this car, while doing research for another video. Um, the video on the 427 4 GT40. That's a cool video, so if you want to watch it, go and watch it after this one. But I saw in the grid, there was these Rover BRM turbine cars, and it was like, what? A turbine car on Le Mans? And then I read up on it further, and it was like, they actually raced a jet engine car against a pack of Ferraris and 4 GT40s and Daytonas, and it's just really cool. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of this car and this video. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?